Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the Correct Views. It's Sam I. B. DeGangi doing political commentary for the media speaks. Giving you a different part of the normal intro song because that's the way it decided the cue. What are you going to do? Hey, friends, what's up? Welcome aboard. I'm going to talk about a couple of things today. Uh, just a couple topics that have absolutely struck me as the strangest thing ever. I, I've said for a long time that I'm a firm believer in the Mandela effect, whatever you want to call it. Things just aren't where they're supposed to be. Okay? One of those things is bush worship. All right, friends. The Bush family has been hated by every liberal from here to Budapest for as long as I've been alive. This is a simple fact. Bush Jr. is, as I remember, one of the most detested presidents of all time. I'm sorry the man died. I, wish, I don't hope he goes to hell or anything horrible like I've seen online from some people that didn't like him. And he was a leader of my country, and I love my country, and I respect what he did. Okay? That said, is anybody with me? George Bush was not a good man. Where is this coming from? There's this constant stream of people that are like Republicans that are freaking out here telling me what in the world. Hello, Rob. No, I'm just up late. I'm DJing again. Rob used to DJ. He knows. Um, where the Bush worship coming from the right out of nowhere because of what support for Donald Trump? Donald Trump thinks about as highly as the Bushes as I do, which is pretty low. Second of all, you're, you're going to pretend that he didn't get us stranded in the Middle East since I was a senior in high school. Okay, remember, Ronald Reagan gave us the longest period of peacetime prosperity. You have to put those together. Peacetime prosperity in history. If you don't put those together, it won't be right. It's the longest period of peacetime prosperity, that is, non-war and growth, that the United States had ever seen under Ronald Reagan. The moment that Bush took office, we were stranded in the Middle East. Now, again, I admit to this openly, there are two votes that I regret casting in my life for president. One of those was for Bush Jr., I picked him over Kerry, which I don't regret, but I didn't like Michael Bednarik, who was the libertarian candidate, which is who I normally vote for. I picked Bush Jr. and greatly regret it to this day. It's one of the sins I may have to apologize for face to face with God. I wish I'd never done it. I should have picked Bednarik. Thank you, Rob. Even though I didn't like Bednarik, I should have voted for Bednarik. Does that mean I'm happy that Bush died? No. My point is, the other vote that I regret is his father. Now, I kind of get forgiven for this one. I'm not going to give a great big apology here, because a Rob and Mike are both listening. Listening, Great, they're as old as I am. Um, they might be a bit older, but we won't go there. Um... When I was growing up, I, I was, I turned 18 in January, November rolled around, my dad voted Republican, my mom voted Democrat, and my dad's candidates tend to annoy me less than my mother's did. Again, we were coming off the 80s, you have to remember. So I'm saying that I liked Reagan over Mondale, I liked Reagan over Carter. Therefore, I would assume, because I was only 19 years old, that I was also going to be very happy. Oh, don't die, Clinton. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, we'll get to that in a minute. I had a comment here that almost made me die. Um, I didn't know which way to go. So I finally picked Bush. I did not know what a libertarian was at that time. I didn't completely understand what an independent was, and I probably would have cast my vote for the libertarian looking back at it. I probably would have done that. However, 
I didn't know any better. But those are the two votes that I greatly uh, regret. Why? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I don't like Bush Sr. It's really easy. First of all, we have the issue that he's the one who got us stranded in the Middle East. After the prosperity and peace that Reagan brought us, that, that, that's what he brought us into. We hadn't been involved in much of anything after Vietnam, thanks to Carter, who I didn't like him a lot, but he was peaceful. Carter and Reagan kind of kept us out of things. Yeah, Reagan attacked Libya, but it was once. It wasn't a war. The moment Bush got in there, we got tied up to the Middle East to no end. This man was a disaster. The reason that the Republicans didn't get a vote from anybody under the age of 60 for a very long time was because of Newt Gingrich, who has since gotten much smarter than he used to be. He's gotten much more libertarian. Uh, at the time he was in office, he was terrible. Uh, Gingrich and um, uh, the, the whole that whole neocon movement that came with Bush. And this hasn't been completely proven, but there are some people that think he knew about the assassination attempt on Ronald Reagan. Now, you can take that or leave it. Either way. But the point is, what made H.W. such a wonderful person that everyone's going out of their way to talk about what a great person he was? I'm sorry, friends. I'm not happy he died. I'm not happy when anybody dies. I'm not happy that he perished. But I'm not joining you on this one, friends. I'm just not. I'm not doing it. I got a comment. Uh, Clinton was the best president since Reagan. Uh, I respectfully disagree. Um, Clinton did well because he happened to be president during the boom of the internet. I would argue that the monkey from uh, B.J. McCabe and my best friend Bear, what was that TV show? That monkey could have probably had a great economy at the birth of the internet. Not a big Clinton fan, but I understand that a lot of people are. That's fine. No offense to anyone. No, me, personally, no. Um, the other thing I want to go on to is what's going on in France. And I was going to call up a bunch of sources. There are 10 million sources. Look what's going on in France. If you don't know, then I have no idea where your head's been. I can give it to you in a nutshell, though, because that's why you brought I uh, probably tuned in. France has been going in an extremely liberal direction for a very long time. And by that, I mean what liberalism means now, not classic liberalism, because I'm somewhat of a, a toss between a libertarian and a classic liberal. I really am. But um, by that, I mean, I think healthcare is a human right, that kind of thing. It tends to lean left. That said, France is going in the liberal direction as in Bernie Sanders, Nancy Pelosi, hang yourself kind of liberal. So what we have here now is a lot of people in France who decided that they, first of all, believed in the lie, L-I-E, it is not happening, lie of man-made global warming. Man is not warming the planet. And I'm going to give this to you in a nutshell. There's a million ways that you can look this up. Uh, there's a ton of people that have said this. Uh, I, for instance, I would say look up no warming in 19 years. You can search that. Don't search it on Google. Search it on anything else. Preferably start page because they don't uh, filter between left and right opinions. Okay, now I'm going to draw a box here on this business card. Okay, now it's kind of a record. All right. Now, you see this. That there is a period of time. And during that time, let me draw an arrow, the planet has warmed up. And this is what they show you all the time. Here's the problem. I'm going to draw a great big box now if my pen will work. Things never work when you're alive. Did you ever notice that? Okay. Now, this is all of the recorded time that we know. Now, during that time, we have seen this. See what that is? It has been warmer and hotter and colder 
and chillier. During all of recorded history, long before the invention of the combustion engine, man is not warming the planet at all. It's not happening, and it can be scientifically proven for anybody willing to simply look at the facts. Okay? It's that damn simple. Having said that, a lot of people in France decided that they were going to get on this global warming shit. So they did so, and they elected a number of people who said openly, if you elect me, I am going to raise your taxes on energy, which is gas, heat, electricity. We're going to raise the rate on that. Maybe not gas, depends on how it's done. Because normally your gas is triggered by your electric, so you know what I mean. But it can go either way, but you know what I'm saying. Your heating, your energy costs are going to go up. So that we can pay to stop global warming. So that we can have a war on your car. So that we can make you think that driving your kid to school is warming the planet. It's not happening. However... These dolts in France, like much of the rest of the world, decided to go ahead and vote for people that were going to raise their taxes. Now? I, I forget the exact breakdown, but it was like, when you because they buy their gas in liters. When you broke it down to gallon, it was like three or four dollars in taxes. So what's gas right now, like? Dollar ninety seven, let's round it two dollars. Two dollars, by the way, thank you, Mr. Trump. Uh two dollars a gallon. Okay. If you were in France, the gas would be five to six dollars a gallon. So the people freaked. I mean they freaked. And riots were happening and unfortunately people got hurt and I'm not in favor of that. We, we, nobody needs to go that far. That, that's not what peaceful protest is. If you, if, even if you win, if you win through violence, then you're opening the door for the other side to do the same thing. And that's not a great idea. However, I'm so unbelievably proud of the French people because do you know what they did? They stood up for themselves enough that Macron pulled the gas tax. Yes, indeed. He pulled the gas tax, and it is no longer on the people. What's my point? There's a lot of points. Why do we have a migrant caravan that's coming to America because they think they're entitled to get in when they're not? For one thing, they're being hounded by thugs and gangs, not the government. So please, as I've said this before, stop with the what about the Jews when they were fleeing Hitler? That was the government attacking the people. Well, Sam, you always want to let Christians in from Syria. Yes, because the Syrian government is doing absolutely nothing to stop their slaughter. The people in this caravan are fleeing gang violence. If you look at the numbers, the gang violence is just as bad and in some boroughs, whatever they call it, some areas, if you will, I like New York, so I use the word boroughs, some areas of Chicago are just as violent as El Salvador and Honduras. You don't see Canada saying that people who have it bad in Chicago can seek asylum in Canada because the gangs are bad. Why? Because that is a social issue. It is not the government attacking the people. If these people had stood up for themselves the way the people in France stood up for themselves, the gangs would be running for their lives. That's why I'm proud of the French people. And let's face it, throughout history, France has dropped the ball a lot. Okay, they're like the, the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers when it comes to fumbles. No one does it better. Yeah, maybe the Browns. No, I lost half my viewers. Um, hate mail incoming. I get it. But they stood up for themselves. If it wasn't for us, the French people would be speaking German today, okay? They'd be a lampshade, to quote Michael Savage. But they did it right, friends. 
today they did it right. So thank you for tuning in. Good night. God bless. Do remember that you can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com. You can donate through PayPal. I get paid nothing to do this unless you donate. When you donate, it helps me do a better show, a more frequent show, and all of that good stuff. So please do so. Thank you, friends, for listening. Good night. God bless. And it's going to take me a minute to get these all shut off.